track reviews. Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a track review. Going to review a brand new track, the third song, the third teaser to drop from the forthcoming Tame Impala album. Kevin Parker's own musical project is going to be dropping a new record in 2020. Easily one of the most anticipated records of the year, no doubt. I certainly loved the last single to drop from the record, uh, where it seemed like lyrically Kevin was, I guess, contemplating his relevancy, contemplating his success in the music industry, and doing what he's doing long term. It felt a little sad, kind of intimate, and a bit more introspective than I think we are used to uh, Tame Impala going. And might I add, it was done over a pretty good and compelling instrumental. Before I get into this track review, I do want to mention that our Patreon page is linked down below. And you can hit up that page, get access to some extra monthly bonus content, Let's Argues. We have some patron-only Let's Argues over there. And also a monthly listen-along, listening party live streams of classic albums that you guys collectively decide uh, that I listen to on the Patreon page. So hit it up. Check it out. All right. Posthumous Forgiveness is the name of this new Tame Impala cut. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what Kevin and company are offering here. Ba-bam. Okay, Posthumous Forgiveness, thoughts on this track? Right off the bat, liked it a lot, actually, even though it kicked off with what you might call some pretty stereotypically psych pop instrumentation, these tinny, mystical lead guitars, some droning organ, warm bass, falsetto vocals, some washy effects in the mix too. Also some drum and instrumental hits and segues that feel pretty hip hop inspired, especially when you're getting these skipping beats and consistently hitting kick drums that are pretty bassy. Feels almost Kanye inspired at a few points. The first portion of the track is pretty solid. And then as we transition into the second third, uh, we get this instrumental bridge, which is actually really good. The synths kind of pick up in pace and presence. Things get a lot more mystical. Things get a lot more layered and intricate. And then in the final moments of the track, really the last third of the track, the song changes entirely. Different beat, different chord progression, different melody, really different everything. I'll say the vocal melody isn't as pleasurable in the last third as it was in the first third, and I think Kevin singing it in his falsetto sounds a lot better than doing it in his lower register. But with the fat beat at this portion on the track, with the synth layers at this portion on the track, this is really where the song transitions from uh, just sounding like a piece of psych pop to uh, kind of bringing those currents vibes back a little bit. For those going into this record wanting to hear more of that, it, it is it is here a little bit. And then there's the matter of the lyrics, which I think are worth paying attention to because Kevin seems to be putting uh, quite a bit of effort into the narratives behind these tracks. And, and the title of this one is pretty telling, Posthumous Forgiveness, with the meaning of those two words. What Kevin is singing about here is quite obvious with the first portion of the track being spent folding over memories having to do with this person who seems like they were pretty big in Kevin's life. And not all the memories they're folding over are positive ones, mind you, as he talks about this person uh, taking all of their sorries to the grave, I guess all of the apologies they should have said for everything they did. And then the last portion of the track, I guess, is more of a post-forgiveness attitude where Kevin is wishing that he could spend uh, his present with this person and share with this person his life, his song. Songs, uh, having had Mick Jagger on the phone. In that sense, it's a pretty meaningful and personal song and shows quite a bit of emotional development across the six minute runtime, which uh, I'm very impressed that in this runtime, uh, Kevin worked in multiple phases into this track. It's a dynamic song. It is a robust song. It is a substantive song and uh, instrumentally lush as well, pretty on the ears. And I liked the progressions. I liked the ride that it provided. It was trippy, but also engaging. And as far as teaser tracks are concerned, the slow rush is two, four, three right now. I thought Borderline was maybe a little too washed out, uh, maybe a bit too navel gazy, but still I'm pretty excited for this record. 
Uh, let me know what you think of this track down in the comments. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel, Anthony Fantano, Tame Impala. The Slow Rush, Posthumous Forgiveness, Forever.